Bonjour, I'm Tim. I'm Karen. And welcome to another episode of Living a French Life. Well, we have begun the move of boxes from the barn to the house. Yes, but uh, today's episode is not going to focus on that. No, unfortunately, the, the boxes are going to have to uh, wait, but, but we are moving them, so that has a sense <laughs> yeah. of Pretty soon, honey, you'll get to unpack a few. I know. I, I've actually snuck in a couple of boxes already <laughs> to just see. And one box in particular was uh, packed when we were in Hawaii, so 2015. Wow. So I have a lot of pent-up um, box uh, <laughs> desire. Yeah. Oh, and you did find that one box. We, oh, yeah. I found my Christmas present. <laughs> we'll show excited. you that. We'll show you that one later. Yes. Her name's Orla. <laughs> yes. Um, but you're right. We aren't doing boxes today. No. Uh, today we're going to focus on some things that happened uh, over the summer. Uh, we, as Karen mentioned, the three square meters of hell was begun, and that includes the moving of the staircase, the construction of the powder room on the Ré de Chaussée, and the reconstruction of the staircase going up to the premier étage. Uh, honey, how many times did you have to reset the toilet? I claim four. She says seven. Yes, but how many times did I take the staircase apart? <laughs> oh my goodness, yes. There are those moments. I, I think part of the reason why we didn't have a lot of video to share this summer <laughs> is that we were doing the same thing over and over and over again. And we thought, well, this will just be terribly <laughs> boring for anybody watching. And what we thought might take two days wound up taking two months. It was. Some of it was was very frustrating, and uh, you know probably would have had to edit out all the cussing anyhow. So yeah, <laughs> and it, frankly, it it was just boring. How many times <laughs> can Tim and Karen redo that staircase? Uh, well, the the answer is at least four. Yes. <laughs> well, and you you find you got it going, and it was looking great, except the top edge like yeah, ended so, into uh, the beam, uh, and I'm good. like, no. honey, that has to come out. So. Yeah. Um, the marriage survived the three square meters from hell. Yeah. And so that's good. Yeah, so you're going to get part of that this episode. <laughs> the other part will come next week. And uh, uh, as a kind of a, a palate cleanser, <laughs> Karen is going to go and uh, we're going to go on uh, while Karen goes and fetches some garden chairs she mm. found online. Yes. And uh, while we were there, we went and saw one of the sights to see in France, the Milau Bridge. Yeah, that was really beautiful. Yeah, it was kind of cool. It's yeah. a cool space. Yes, it was fun kind of coming up on it and being like surprised by this yeah. big art piece. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. So, uh, you know, do the, do the things that you're supposed to do. Like and subscribe and LLZ. You're alive. We're going to keep this. Okay. <laughs> We're going to do our best in order to keep our budget uh, to a place where that's comfortable. We're going to try to reuse as many of the materials that are already in the house as we can. And one of those things we're going to do, because frankly I kind of like it, is the stair. It's very simple, um, but it's not going to be in this place. Because this is our kitchen and it's the one wall we have in order to uh, hide away our appliances like the refrigerator, storage for the pantry. And so we want to utilize this wall for kitchen storage. So the stair is actually going to go a 180 degree turn and then be on the other side of this wall. So now we're in one of those small little rooms here and the stair's on the other side of this wall. And we'll keep a, a new wall between the corner and the center post beam which has to stay because it's part of the structural integrity of the house. And we'll put in a new wall which is going to allow us to hide some of the electrical appliance refrigerator and storage for pantry on the other side. And then the steps, rather than going up this way to reach the first floor, uh, they're going to get turned so that you'll go up the steps this way. Because currently, if you go up this way, you find yourself going right into the small part of the eave, and it's not really comfortable to make that turn. 
Whereas if you go up the steps in this direction, then that will allow you to enter the upstairs space in the center and I think it will be far more comfortable and, and make a lot of sense. And it also allows us to do just a, a tiny little landing here, so to take a step up and it will create a landing and then you will be able to um, ascend the staircase. I think it's going to work out well. Tucked underneath is hopefully going to fit our powder room and our washing machine. Tell you for certain there's a reason for where you're at What you do and the pieces of the puzzle that complete you It is time to make your life more beautiful Alright, so it's moving along uh, As is always the case when you're using old material You run into the problem of things not wanting to fit back where they were in the first place uh, Several hundred years of twisting and warping and so I've got this gap right here, and I've got, I'm using all these clamps to try to squeeze these into position so that they'll be completely supported. Um, How's I'll, that I'll going? Get I'll get it. Okay. I'll get it. Okay. I'll get it. I'll get it. So close, it wants to go. It wants to go. It's very close. It's a new day. It's a new day for me and you. Honey, what are you what are you doing? I'm removing this piece of wood. How many times have you removed this piece of wood? I refuse to answer that question on okay. the grounds that it may besmirch my reputation. Okay, three times? I don't know. I don't know. No, definitely not three times. Is this the last time? Oh, I make no promises. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's off. It's off. Good job. So here we are in the powder room. The toilet installed. But now we're going to trim it out and make it pretty. Uh, Karen's been working on the color scheme over here. She uh, has uh, not found it yet. Basically, uh, every color from white to blue going through the grays. It's, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but anyhow, uh, I wanted to share with you a couple of our, late, our, our money saving uh, tips that we do uh, when we're renovating houses. A great way to stay on budget. One of our favorite things to use are these basically wall paneling. They're very thin, they're tongue and groove, they're lightweight, easy to work with. But what's great about them is that they give you a nice look. And they also give you a little bit of texture when you're doing some uh, trim work because they are much thinner than the boards you would ordinarily use for trim. So we're kind of excited about that. The problem with them is that they are a set length. In this case, they are 2,050 millimeters, which is a little over two meters. So, our first move when we were gonna put in the trim, Karen wanted to have it at about this height. But if we did that, we would only get one piece of trim out of each board, and there would be a ton of waste. So, by lowering it just a touch, we now get two pieces out of each board. So, really just cut our price of trimming out this uh, wardrobe, the powder room in half. Now one of the things I'm doing with this is I'm putting a little rabbit joint in here. There are a couple of different ways that you can uh, do corners. Uh, a lot of people like to do um, miter. Like to do, thank you, <laughs> like to do miters uh, where it's basically uh, an angle into an angle and uh, that's great, but on walls that are not necessarily 100% square, that makes for big gaps and a lot of spackle and caulk and things like that. And caulk, as uh, Norm Abrams once said, is not a replacement for wood, nor is it a replacement for craftsmanship. So what we're doing is we're putting a rabbit in. And so when the board come together, they will go in nice and tight and you will have a nice tight connection easily uh, cleaned up with just a tiny little bit of caulk so that the paint, actually probably just a coat of paint would seal that up. 
Anyhow, so that's what we're working on today. I now have my levels. I came all the way across. Uh, I got all my marks, so I know where the top pieces are gonna go. I've already installed the bottom pieces. And now we're gonna get this trimmed out. We're gonna have this knocked out today. What are you doing, Karen? Uh, I'm hanging a picture. <laughs> putting the final touches on the bathroom that still has a bunch of work left to be done in it. Yes, the three square meters, the three square meters from hell needed a little, a little detail. And I found this in the one box that I was unpacking and it's this beautiful little watercolor and I had it framed in silk and it's the same color as the, the bathroom. So it just, destined to live here. It also has a little bit of mustard color and it looks a bit more like the landscape down in Gers, so farther south than here, but it just it just makes me feel of uh, the southwest here in France. And the colors harken back to the little um, vintage shelf I have above the sink. So I, I, I'm pleased. I'm pleased. So this is why you're so excited about someday getting into your boxes? This one treasure I pulled from the boxes. Imagine what's in the other 200 boxes that I have. So I'm really excited. So we are on the road again. We have rented our favorite uh, uh, little moving van. Yeah, this this one uh, recognized my phone immediately when I got in the car. <laughs> <laughs> and we're actually kind of happy that we're on a road trip because uh, it is hot, hotter than a schmatter. How hot is it, Tim? Uh, 39 degrees, 39. Oh, no, no. Which means 102 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, it is, we are in the midst of a uh, chaleur, a Ch chaleur, chaleur, or a canicule. Canicule. It is a heat wave, and it is. Uh, it's all over France. I think even England's going to be up to forty today, and oh, it's just. Uh, it's it's rough. We've got they're, some. They're pretty pasty up there. They're not yeah, ready for that. Yeah, and they're not ready for this. They say it's you know it's the new way of things. And uh, so we got our van because we're going to go get garden chairs. Tim, aren't you so excited? I am, especially since we need them so desperately right now. <laughs> well, you just, sometimes things find you before maybe you're ready for them. But uh, we are planning a birthday bash for myself for next year. And I'm hoping to have the garden ready to go. And I have this vision of these wonderful chairs and I found them on Facebook Marketplace. So we are heading to the city of Milau. And um, actually, this is something there that Tim's always wanted to see. Yeah, well, I don't know about always wanted to see, but I have this thing where I like to see the things that are the tallest or the most or the oldest or the highest or the first. And, and uh, this Milau shows up um, uh, many times on those uh, internet quizzes as a thing to be seen because it is one of the highest suspension bridges in the world. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. Yeah, it'll be great. So I don't know if there'll be much to show you on our way, but I'll show you the chairs and uh, we'll show you the bridge. I'm sure we'll find it, right? Oh, absolutely. Yes. All right, just a quick view. That is the Malau suspension bridge. And uh, we're gonna be able to get a little bit closer to it. We're about 10 minutes to the chairs and it crosses this uh, enormous valley with the Tarn River. We, uh, we're getting very close. We are going to go under, uh, I do believe, the Milau Viaduct. Really beautiful in its simplicity. 
really a pretty impressive bridge. Yes, it is. It goes for quite a distance. We're only seeing part of it. Well, I'm just glad I don't have to bring it back on the subway in Berlin. Yeah, that's true. That is very true. Much furniture for that apartment came on the subway. Yep, there they are. Those are my garden shears. What do you think? I think they're pretty good. Uh, how many are there? Six? So... Six, so $25, uh, $25 a chair. Plus the rental truck. So a little more, 35 per chair. That's not a bad price. And they're they're in great shape and they're just what I was looking for, for the garden. It was a hot summer here in France. It was super duper hot. Yeah, but uh, we made the most of it. Uh, we enjoyed the coolness inside the house when we could. Yes. And uh, that's a, one of the great things about a big stone house, uh, well, or even a little stone house, is that uh, it manages to keep out much of the heat. Uh, notice that uh, through the holes in the floor, uh, really cool air coming up out of the cob, so. Yes, <laughs> but we are going to have fewer holes yes. in the floor. Yes. Yes. That, that that's a that's a future episode that you'll yes. see me replacing the floor. That's right. Good. But I I think our three square meters from hell is going to continue for part two, isn't it? It is. Yes. So uh, you don't want to miss that. It no. gets. It, actually, you know, it's not so bad. The footage makes it look like it was very doable. Yeah. Okay. It was. <laughs> it just was a tiny space that had a lot going on. Yeah, way out of proportion to the size. The, the time that it took was way out of proportion to the size of the project. Right. And we did have a plan. You know, we drew it out. Yeah. We mapped out doorways and plumbing, and electrical uh, needs. But until you really start getting into it, we realized if we moved the door, then perhaps we might have easier access into the bathroom and create more space into what was going to be our snug, which is now going to be our dining room. So, you know, sometimes you just have to roll with the possibilities. Yeah, uh, flexibility is key. And, uh, and any renovation. Yeah, that's true. There's but really in an old house. Yeah, and the good thing is, and this is something I was talking with somebody else about uh, uh, the other day, is that one of the uh, important things to do to keep your costs down when you're doing a renovation is to, instead of deciding what you must have and then going out and purchasing all the materials necessary for that thing you must have in the size you must have, you need to look at what you do have and adjust your plans to get you all the things you want and still stay inside of a budget. Um, you know, using wood, you know, remember we were saving all those trim pieces and all that wood uh, from the dismantling of the project, and we're using that now in putting yes. it back together. And so that saves a ridiculous amount of money, especially yeah. as expensive as lumber's gotten. Right, absolutely. And our budget's, you know, a key factor for us and for a lot of people doing restoration work. And so whenever you can reuse and repurpose those things, uh, it's, it's a little bit easier on the, on the numbers. Absolutely. So that's gonna wrap it up for this episode. Join us again next time when the three square meters from hell continues. But there will be a light at the end of the tunnel. Absolutely. And what was the other thing we were going to do in the next episode? I don't know. I, I will just surprise them. It is a mystery. It yeah, is. Yeah. Uh, but we've got lots of footage and lots of good things. So uh, please uh, join us. Uh, like, subscribe, tell two friends. Hit that little uh, bell icon do so what, you receive the notifications. Yeah, do whatever your kids and grandkids are doing to make things get popular because you you know, that would be very useful. We yes. want a lot of people to see these videos. And make sure you go all the way to the end because that's where we put the bloopers. So, until next time. A tout à l'heure. It's a pretty clean morning. Here we are. Oh my goodness. Do you want me to start with the... Uh... I'm Karen. Okay, got it. <laughs> All right.
Hi, I'm Karen. <laughs> so, so, so. Hi, I'm Karen. <laughs> life. 